Good afternoon again. All right, so we're looking at um, uh, question nine, a velocity against time graph here. So the question reads as follows. It says um, the velocity time graph below shows the motion of a cyclist over a 40 seconds, all right? So it's over 40 seconds, you could see um, the motion of the, of the cyclist started at there to A and then goes to B right there. So that's the motion of the cyclist. All right, let's see the questions. Calculate the gradient of OA. <clears throat> All right, so the gradient of OA, OA is a straight line. You could see OA is a straight line. All right, so definitely we can find the gradient of OA. You could see it right there, it's a straight line. So the gradient of this, line is simply the idea of the change in what's happening on your y-axis in relation to what's happening on your x-axis. So it's the same concept, only that we're dealing with velocity and time. So it's in a change in the velocity over change in the time for that period. So let's mark the period off. So we're talking from that spot to a coming back to the 25. So we're actually looking at what took place in this 25 seconds right there, right there. So we're looking at what took place here, change. So what we're looking at now is, <clears throat> is that the gradient is actually the acceleration, right? So the gradient that we're dealing with is definitely the acceleration. So the acceleration there is simply the change in velocity, which means that it is our final velocity minus the initial velocity over the final time minus the initial time. So in terms of the, the, the idea now, in terms of values, you're talking about your final velocity, which is 10 minus the initial velocity, which is zero. <clears throat> so the change was from a zero to 10, and that happened over zero to 25 on the other axis. So let's look again. Talking about a zero to 10 here over a zero to 25 there. So we're looking at 10 over 25 meters per second square. So that is actually the acceleration. So Let's put it right there. So the gradient is equal to, this is equal to 10 over 25 uh, meters per second square, or it could be written as 10 over 25 meters per second square. Um, if you wanna cancel down using five, you will get 250. So depending on what you're doing, because some people probably cancel down by five, so you get 250 meters per second second square. So it's depending on what you want to do. All those answers are fine. All right, let's look at, let's push further. AB, we want to find the gradient AB. Let's observe AB. AB, as you could see, so let's clear this diagram up quickly. AB, so we're moving from A to B here, right there. <clears throat> so AB is a straight, line and not only that it's not a slope right you can see that it's a line that is parallel to the x-axis here so it's parallel to the x-axis it's an horizontal line which means that naturally the slope is zero so what we want to quickly grab at is we want to calculate still all right so the change would be from a 10 because this is 10 so there was no change. So it's 10 at point A, 10 at point B. The time was changing though, because we moved from a 25 to 40, but that velocity was still 10 at those two places. So if I'm gonna calculate this, we would have a change in velocity. So the acceleration there would be V1 minus, so final velocity minus the initial velocity, and it happened over 40 minus 25. We are looking at final, which is 10. The initial was 10 over 40 minus 25. 
So we're looking at, check this out, we're looking at 0 over 15, and that is 0 meters per second square. So we got 0 for that. Understand? Looking at it, we knew it was a 0. I'm just displaying the working out because the change, as you could see from here to here, was an horizontal line, so there was no slope. So it's a 10 minus 10, which is a 0. So that so we're saying that the slope there was a zero. All right, good. All right, so let's go to the next section. The next section says complete the following statement. The cyclist started from rest. So rest means from zero, where the velocity was zero meters per second. All right, and steadily increase its velocity. By what? It increased its velocity by 10 over 25 meters per second each second. In other words, then, um, the idea of the acceleration is coming in because you're accelerating, which means a change in velocity over time. So what we have here is the fact that it accelerated at that, which means there is a change in the velocity. So in response to this, the velocity was increasing by 10 over 25 for every second of the way. And it did it for 25 seconds. During the next 15 seconds, during the next 15 seconds, the velocity remained constant. This means that the acceleration is zero. The velocity remains constant, the acceleration is zero. Right, because acceleration is the change in velocity. So if the velocity remains constant, then there is no acceleration. And that was the horizontal line that we saw. The um, question went further now to say, determine the average speed of the cyclist over the 40 minute period. We wanna make sure that we highlight the fact that average speed is, is average speed is total distance over total time. So this is the idea that we want to embark on. No, we haven't had this though. We don't have the distance. So we're gonna to have to make an effort to find the distance. And then we know that the time is 40 seconds. The distance though, let's go back to the diagram. The distance of a velocity against time can be easily calculated by looking at the curve. So it is the area under the curve. What do I mean? The distance traveled is gonna be the area of this shape that you're seeing. So if you can find the area of the plane shape seen throughout that journey, which is, I'm seeing a trapezium, at once, I could split it into a triangle and a rectangle, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to work out the trapezium. So the idea is this, that if you see that plane shape under the curve, the area that you're referring to, the area of this plane shape is classified as the distance traveled. So if I can find the area, area is going to equal to the distance traveled. So this area that I'm seeing is a trapezium. So I'm going to just put it on the side here. So the distance is simply the area of the trapezium. The area of the trapezium is simply this half the sum of the parallel sides. So we're talking about from A to B, which is 25 to 40, that's 15, plus 0 to 40, that's 40, half the sum of the parallel sides times the height, and the height is 10. So we're putting together that figure, um, trying not to make an error. So we're talking about um, 55 divided by 2, and then multiply by 10, and we're going to get 270. Two seventy-five. 
So 275 meters, all right? So then the distance is 275 meters throughout that journey. So now we could take that distance here and solve this problem now. So we're talking about total distance, which is 275 meters over the time, which is was a 40 second journey. So total distance over total time, 275 divided by 40. And we're looking at six, point eight seven five meters average speed per second right so that's meters per second so we're talking about that meters per second so there it is there it is there it is that is our average speed all right thank you for watching please like subscribe and drop a comment